registernowslife.org. You're going through a dark place, but you can make it light. You're going through a place of, of sorrow, but you can make it a place of laughter. Because when your heart is set on a pilgrimage, you change the environment you are in. Iron Sharpens Iron 2023. At All Nations Caris House. Register now using the mobile app or visit advancedlife.org. Jesus didn't try to go in there, analyze the situation, diagnose the situation, interrogate the parents. He just walks in there and he speaks life. I want to encourage somebody in here to speak life over every area of your life. Iron Sharpens Iron 2023. From July 19th through 23rd at All Nations Caris House. Register now using the mobile app or visit advancedlife.org. Sharpens Iron 2023 from July 19th through 23rd at All Nations Caris House. Register now using the mobile app or visit advancedlife.org.
Hello. Hello, good morning from the Keris House Studios, brand new state of the art studios. Mommy and I welcome you to a wonderful Sunday morning experience. It's going to be an amazing time. Listen, this week is ISI week, Iron Sharpens Iron, Pastors and Leaders Conference. Many times we like to do revivals, you know, spiritual revivals, financial revivals, but I feel that we need a leadership and wisdom revival. That is why I want to specially invite you. Mommy has a few words to talk to you about that and leadership. Come on, Mommy. Yes, there, I believe there is leadership deposited on the inside of each and every one of us. And so this week, we will endeavor through the speakers to bring out the leadership that God has deposited on the inside of you. Scripture says in Psalm 23, verse number 1, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so God has deposited some leadership potential on the inside of you. I encourage you to share. I encourage you to tag people so people can register. And I believe that this week will be a blessing to each and every one of you. I know technology is amazing, but technology cannot take the place. I know AI and GB3 and all these things are there, but it cannot actually take the place of humans. If you stay home, yes, you have a, a, a lot of education, but when you come here, not only will you get education, you get impartation too. So please register, take some time off, come and invest in yourself, put some things, let these leaders invest into you. And you'll be a better person for that on your job, in your business, and in your everything. How about that? You agree with me? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I And even if you can't make it during the day, by all means, show up in the evening. We're going to have an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. You know, things don't normally correct themselves. You have to make the effort. Leadership doesn't just happen. You've got to be intentional. So let's do it. And on that note, we want to specially... Welcome everybody to this morning's service. It's going to be awesome. Continue on the series on leadership. L leadership lessons is going to be amazing. So let's join Carrie's worship and together let us make it like never before. Yes, please mommy. Share, please share the page. If you have your device, please pick it up right now. Let's share the page. We are on YouTube. We are on uh, Instagram. We are on Facebook. And trust me, if it's worth hearing, it is worth sharing. The four lepers said, why do we sit until we die? We have to share the good news. It's good news. So let's share. So pick up your device. I'm picking up my device now. I am sharing. Share as many as you can. Tag people. And I believe that your life will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you. Let's have a wonderful experience in the presence of the Lord. See you soon. Hallelujah. Good morning, All Nations Church. Please let's be upstanding with a clap, with a shout, with a wave unto the King of Kings. Release your praise, release your praise for the Lord inhabits in the praises of his people. It is good to praise the Lord when, when you praise. When you praise, things happen. When you praise, there is healing. When you praise, there is freedom. Open up your mouth and give the Lord a mighty shout. Shake the person next to you and say, somebody, let's praise the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, make it loud. If you know that you are on the Lord's side, then prove to him by releasing your praise. Prove to him by releasing your worship. Come on, come on, all nations, it is not loud enough for our God. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Turn to the person standing next to you that asks the person, are you on the Lord's side? I didn't hear you. Ask the person, are you on the Lord's side? Then tell them again that come and join me and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
God, you are good. You are faithful. You remain the same. You never change. Come on, in-house, online. Just open your mouth and call him those precious names. Call him Father. Call him Savior. Call him Daddy. Call him Protector. Tell him he is faithful. Let him know how precious he is to you. How dearly you hold him to your heart. The one who loves you beyond everything, in spite of everything. Come on, flood the atmosphere with your worship. To our Lord, to our Master, to our Savior. Our King who reigns forever, the Eternal One.
a kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory voice for your reason, Yeshua.
but just declare over the problem that my God is bigger. Continue to lift him higher over that problem. So as we introduce this next song, that's the same, the same atmosphere that we're, we're just invoking, that God is bigger than any problem. We want to ask him, Father, help me, for I'm trusting in you. And as we trust him, we praise him on credit. Thank you for covering me. Thank you for holding my hand. Amen. So we're going to sing this song in Zulu. We're going to sing this song in G. And we're going to sing it in English. But each and every time, the words are the same. And I want you to get out of your seat if you can. I want you to dance. Come to the altar. You're free. Come out of your seat and come to the altar and dance.
the commission has gone forth. Through the pursuit and the knowledge of God, we position ourselves to encounter and utilize the presence and power of God to do great things in the world. It is the day to empower God's people to walk in dominion of all aspects of life and leadership. It is the season to engage the nations for the cause of the King and His Kingdom. It is the season for new challenges, new achievements, and new levels of productivity. These are the days of His power. These are the days of His grace. These are the days of His majesty. 2023. Our year of exploits. Please stand and welcome our senior pastor, Dr. Frank Ofosu. Generations Opia. after generations, keep praising you, yet no one sums you up. Then I ask the Lord, what name fits you? Is your king? Is he your king? If it is your king, then let the shout of the king be in the house. The Bible says that the shout of the king is amongst the people. Let the shout of the Lord clap your hands, all ye people. Let there be a shout of triumph to our God and our king. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the soon coming king, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome to service this morning. I'm, I trust that we're going to have a wonderful time of fellowship. Before you are seated, turn to somebody to your left or to your right. Let them feel, let them know how appreciative you are of seeing them today. Don't propose, just let them know you really. <laughs> and if you, are, if you are not on speaking terms, what a good opportunity to make up. Just do that, just do that. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Did somebody just propose? <laughs> well, <laughs> can somebody tell mommy her phone is calling me? You're calling me. Your phone is calling me. <laughs> She's missing me already, you know. She's Anyway, anyway, are you all well? Let's make Keris worship feel very appreciated. Very, very appreciated. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful. Amen. They help us to worship God better. Amen. ISI is around the corner. How many of you are excited about ISI? Yeah. Pastors and Leaders Conference. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Listen, leadership happens in places too. If you stay at home and you watch it, you may get information. But when you show up, you get information and impartation. How about that? And there are wonderful women and wonderful men who are coming from all over the world to be a blessing to us. One of the greatest investments you can ever make, you can ever make is to invest in yourself. Because everywhere you go, you carry your whole self there. Never forget that. 
So you are going to be challenged. You are going to be stretched. Your mind is going to be taken out. That's what we call brainwash. Your brain will be taken out and washed. Then it's going to be put back. Some of you are full of things. We have to, you know, deprogram you to some to defragment, others to deworm, whichever one it is. And then it will make you very good. So please make yourself ready. Take some time off. Take some time off and let's get into business. Amen. Right. How many of you were in the house last Sunday? I want to see. Okay. How many of you were not in the house last Sunday? Equal number of people. This is getting... How many of you don't remember whether you were here or not? No, seven days is a long time. Seven days is a long time. Seven days is a long time. It's a long time. But um, we started some lessons on leadership. You know, God gave us a word. God gave us a word. Um, every year, God gives us a word to guide us. All our churches, organizations, affiliates, he gives us words to guide us. And this year, the word that he gave to us, like you can see behind me, is from Daniel 11 and 32. It says that for the people that know their God, they shall be strong and then they shall carry out great exploits. They shall carry out great exploits. It means you will accomplish mighty things in your life. The day you discover the import of this word that he has given to us, that is the day you resign from ordinary living. You must live your life and live footprints in the sands of time. You were not created or you were not given birth to, to come here on earth to come and just occupy space and breathe air and die and go and lie underneath the earth just to occupy space. If the reason for your birth was just death, then life is a tragedy and it's not worth living. The great teacher Miles Moreau said that, Miles Moreau said that the most expensive places on earth are in the cemeteries because underneath those gravestones and headstones are songs that were never sung, books that were never written, leadership that were never expressed, and sitting on the inside of you, crying out for expression, is leadership. You, you didn't come here just to make up the numbers. You came here to become something. Lines that your forebears could not break, you must break them. That is how you carry out great exploits. Amen. You achieve great things in your life. And every month we have our themes. And the theme for this month is leadership exploits. Normally July is our month of leadership. So leadership exploits. And so we began this, this, this journey together about leadership lessons. We began to learn things about leadership. Leadership is very important. And uh, we, we said, let me do a very quick recap. We said last week that um, leadership has been and would be the enduring cry of the ages. No people, no persons, no nation will rise above the quality of leadership they have. In fact, people never leave bondage and oppression until they are given leaders. The Lord said in Jeremiah, I think we quote the verse 15 a lot, chapter number 3, about, you know, he will give you shepherds according to his own heart. But when you read it in context, he was talking about when Israel was scattered all, the, all over the place because they were, they were backslidden. And in verse number 14, if you can go back a little bit for me, verse number 14, the Bible says that God said that, I'll pick you up, return to me, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I'm married to you. I'll take you one from a city, two from a family, and bring you to Zion. Zion is a type of the church. And God says that he will gather all of you. But when he gathers you, then he goes to the next thing. He says, then I will give you leaders. Shepherds are leaders. According to my heart, God chooses his shepherds for you. And they will lead you. They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Isaiah said that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. And so you need leaders to lead you. The day you get to a place where you feel you are, not, you, are not, you are above being led, that is the day you start deteriorating. Everybody needs to be led. You have to be a follower first before you become a leader. And it's important. In fact, the day that I discovered that one of the judgments that God can bring upon some people is, is taking leadership away, I was shocked. In Isaiah chapter 3, he talks about it. That Judah, you are terrible. And because of that, I'm going to execute judgment. And he says that the Lord will take away your leaders, your prophets, your wise men, your counselors, your, everybody that will give you leader. The Lord says, I will take them away from you. Then I will replace them with children who shall be your oppressors. Does it sound like today? So leadership is very important. It was General de Gaulle of France who said that politics is too important to be left in the hands of politicians. I can paraphrase it and say that uh, life is too important to live to chance. You need to be led. Amen. Amen. 
Israel was in bondage for over 400 years, in fact, 430 years under Egyptian rule until a leader called Moses was prepared, commissioned, and released to go get them out. The mandate that our Lord Jesus Christ brought, as he spelt it in Luke 4.18, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. You look at it, leadership is to break bondages, is to open prison doors, open eyes, and to bring them to a place. And last week, we began to establish that leadership happens primarily under two settings. This, uh, uh, let me do a, a quick, then I'll, I'll get off there. Under two settings, number one, leadership harms when there are crises and challenges. When there are crises and challenges, leaders are discovered. Anytime there's a crisis, it's a call for leadership. Somebody has to rise. Somebody has to come up. And we talked about Moses. We talked about Nelson Mandela of South Africa. We talked about Martin Luther King. Martin Luther Martin Luther King. We talked about Churchill. And then the second instance is intentional processing. You must be intentional, deliberate about being groomed for leader. That is when you will subject yourself to teaching, to training, to mentoring, sometimes painful processing because they are all a part. You should be very intentional about allowing leadership to come out of you. Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you. Let's be yoked together. I am the master. I am the pro. You are the novice. Let's yoke and watch the way I do things. It was, it was Gideon who said, to, who said to his army that, watch me, watch me. When we come to the camp of the enemy, watch me and do as I do. So you watch I'm repenting, that's all. <laughs> there are eunuchs who were born like that from their mother's womb. Know that. Then there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men. Then there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. And Jesus said, the one who is able to accept it, let accept it. You see three categories of people. There are some who were born eunuchs. That is there are some things in life that you didn't sign up for. There are some things in life, whether you like it, you didn't sign up for who gave birth to you. You are stuck. You can change your name. You can change your accent. You can. Some men were made eunuchs by other men. There are things that people do to you that whether you like it or not, it's been done to you. So there are some things you can't change. You've got to accept them. But the third category is that there are people who were intentional because of something ahead of them, the kingdom. They made themselves eunuchs. For me, that is the one I really respect. That is the thing that matters most. There are things that you must be intentional about in your life because of what is ahead of you. And we saw that one major key in intentional processing is to study after great leaders. We read from Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 7. The writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that we must consider the lives of our leaders. For, do not forget the example of your spiritual leaders who have spoken God's messages to you. Take a close look at how their lives ended and then follow their walk of faith. And our template as a great spiritual leader was Paul the Apostle. Paul did, did, did not only show us some principles, but he also showed us perspective. He's been there, he's done that, he's bought a t-shirt, he's bought a hat. And so he can give us a manual to learn from. So last week we began to look at Acts chapter 28 about the record of his journey to Rome. Paul was going to Rome not because of something he has done wrong, but because of everything that he has done right. He was doing the will of God, and yet he entered into trouble. He found himself in shipwreck. He found himself in the cold weather. Snakes were biting him. He found himself, when he read the whole, I hope he read the whole chapter of, of Acts 28. And he finds himself even under house arrest. And so we began to leave some lessons out there. And I said I was intentional in bringing the life of Paul at the tail end because he offers us a lot of perspectives. When people have walked a particular path, they understand some things differently. I think last Sunday, in one of the things I told you that, if at the end, when you are very old, when you have gotten on in life, and your theology still matches your beginning, you need to write us a manual. <laughs> life happens. Life teaches you some things. Because there's a difference between somebody who is campaigning for election and somebody who has won the election course, except one. But when you are campaigning, you, 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 you can talk. But when you get into office and they begin to read you the daily briefings, it sobers you. 
It is easy to stand in the compound of a coward and, po and point to the ruins of the place a brave, a brave man lived. You understand it tomorrow night. <laughs> but we, we began to lift up a few things. And the first thing we looked at is that the leadership path is not always straightforward. We looked at that. Leadership path is not always straightforward. And even life is never straightforward. If somebody told you that life is so mad, you know, a lot of people get offended, get distressed, get mildly irritated with God because somehow the, the God they scripted and their theology is not matching. If you have lived longer about, than one day, you will agree with me that life is not always straightforward. But we'll get there. He'll get you there. Number two, we lifted up that people will surprise you. Barbarians, foreigners, they help Paul and his team. And sometimes your biggest help will come from those that you least expect. And sometimes your biggest hurt will come from those two that you least expect. It is life. It is leadership. Sometimes things happen. Then the third thing that we looked at and we stopped, I think that was my thing, is that there will always be questions. How many of you enjoy that one? I got a lot of feedback. There will always, in this, listen, in this Christianity, there's something called contradictions of faith. Paradoxes. That you don't understand. Paul, he gets bitten by a snake. And God preserves him so he doesn't die. Why? So that he will go to Rome to die. You keep me alive to die. It doesn't make sense. But all of us have questions. All of us have questions. And the majority of the questions we have, God is not under any obligation to answer. There's something that is, listen, in the garden, for three times, our Lord Jesus said, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. And at the end, he got no answer. And so he had to acquiesce. He had to accept it that this is your will for me. So help me. And when you read that record, the moment they said, not my will, but your will, angels came to strengthen him. There are times, many times, that you have, you have to come to that place where you understand, that, Lord, all I need is your help. All I need is your strength. Because, listen, if you are angry with God, you are wasting your filling the gap. You can't serve God like that. Job's wife, I mean, Job said to his wife, should we accept only good and not accept when bad comes? And he qualified the woman. I respect women too much. I don't want to quote it. But he said it. And sometimes our Christianity is like, I'm only happy when God has happied me. But in this life, my friend, things happen. All of us are going through something. Some people, they advertise theirs better. But everybody you meet is going through something. That's why you have to be nice to people. <laughs> All right, let me take the next two, then I'm done. <coughs> the, the fourth thing that I picked up from the scripture by leadership lessons is that people will always have an opinion about you. Did I get a response? Yes. Thank you. People will always have opinions about you. Please listen. Paul the apostle, you, we, we are reading it with hindsight so we understand the story. But when it was happening live, there was not insight from the people who were observing the man. And it's many times it's like leadership in our lives, in life. People really may not understand your exact thing so they will just conjecture. And so when they saw that the snake had beaten Paul, immediately they said, he's a murderer. And justice will not let him go because he escaped shipwreck and he thinks he's free. That is why this is happening to him. And when he didn't respond and nothing happened and the Bible says they were expecting for him to swell up and die. Because if a viper bites you in those days, there was no anti-snake bite serum. You were gone. All those toxic salivas, the hemotoxins and the, uh, all this, you, you are gone. And he didn't die. Then they changed their minds. And they said he's a god. So if you're in leadership, please listen. Like death and taxes, opinions are always going to be there. And people will have opinions about you based on your present situation. That is leadership, my friend. And many times the opinions come in something called criticism. If you want to be a leader and you can't handle criticism, please quit. Because it's a fact of life. Like they say here that if you can't stand the heat, don't go into the kitchen. It's as simple as that. The people had opinions about Paul. Some said, one moment they said he's a God. A, a, a murderer. The next moment he's, he's a God. Can you imagine? Everybody, listen, in your life, people will have opinions about you. And by the way, opinions are like armpits. Everybody has two. 
murderer, God, this, that. It goes on. And I realize, people of God, that criticism is often the expression of people's opinions about you at a particular time. I know that there are constructive criticisms and there are destructive criticisms. But I know that for every one constructive one you get, there are a hundred destructive you are going to get. There's always a motive behind it to tear you down. And so please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that if you are going to be a leader, brace yourself for people to have all kinds of opinions about you. Never forget that. So when you have been talked about, what are you going to do? Paul the apostle, they call him all kinds of names. And understand that people will always think that they know you better than you know yourself. If you're a leader. <laughs> people will say, okay, I, 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 I told you about a situation about my life so about some 20 years ago when we had started this weekend. I've taken my son Brandon to the barber's, barber's shop. And we're sitting there, then this new church that has come into North Cross name came up, All Nations. And so people started. It looks like they started a church. <laughs> the authority that they were speaking. And the pastor, he's a thief. He was in UK. In fact, he's wanted. I mean, they, uh, they, were, they were very good. And I said that the Baba was a member of the church, but it was too late for him to say, you know, so, so he was working and his hands were like. And, and then a man will even come to him and say, Master, this thing I'm saying. I said, Oh, it's true, it's true. He's a thief, he's a thief. He's a thief. And Brandon wanted a quarter to buy, you know, those uh, candies and things that they have that quarter machine. So I went to my car to get it. So when I went into the car, the Baba told the guys that the man you are talking about, he's the one that walked out. So when I walked back, the place was quiet. And I was in charge. And my hands were in my pocket. I mean, I had a swag. And I said, all right, boys, how are you doing, guys? You know, you, 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 it, it happens, my friend. If you can't handle it, then you cannot be, a, you, you've got to have a tough skin. If you can't stand the heat, the kitchen is not yours. Never forget that. Listen, criticisms and opinions will come. Sometimes, many times, they are undeserved. Many times they come from people who are the least qualified to criticize you. I like that. Did anybody say repeat? Oh, yes. It's, it's very easy to stand outside and, and just criticize. Was it Calvin Coolidge? That, is it Calvin Coolidge also who said that, you see, the, 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 the credit is to the person who is, it's not the critic who counts. But it's rather the person who is in the arena. Their face are mad with blood, sweat and tears. They fail, but they know that even in failing, they are trying. My friend, that is leadership for you. People have opinions about you. Am I talking to somebody? Sometimes it can be even a personal attack. You're going to have it. Some pastor, you are listening to me, my friend. You better dress up and show up. Because when you go to escape, even when you run away, they will, they will criticize you that you have run away. So better, you better wake up. Am I helping somebody? Yeah. And every one of you, you have gone through something like that before. How do you respond? How do you, how do you handle these opinions? And Look at Paul. When they, when they called him Medra, did he say anything? Did he say anything? Acts chapter 28. Give me verse, I think, 4 or 5, four or, five or something. Let's look at it. What did he do? Acts 28, if we can find it. The natives saw the creature hanging from his hand. They said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea. Let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. Justice does not allow to live. Not the justice standing there, but justice. And he shook up the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Verse number six. And however, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time, like how your enemies will look forever. They saw no harm come to him, and they changed their minds and said he was a god. Now, I have a question here. When they called him a murderer, did he respond? No. When they called him a god, did he respond? No. You see, one of the great marks of life and leadership is how you handle praise and criticism. Because the fact of the matter is that if you stop to throw a stone at every dog that barks at you, you'll never get your destination. Focus, my friend, focus. 
Focus. Focus. When they praise you, keep moving. They criticize you, keep moving. That is why for me, when people praise me, I like it. I'm not going to say, oh, no, it's the Lord. It's not the Lord, it's me. So praise me. <laughs> praise the me. Because very soon, I'm going to get criticized. So when you praise me and I receive it, I bank it. So that when you criticize me, I balance it so that I become a balanced Christian. <laughs> you, you sing nicely. Some of you sing nicely. And say, oh, sister, you really bless it. It's not me, it's the Lord. When did the Lord take a microphone here? <laughs> Accept the thing. Because one of these days, they're going to say, your pitch was too high. Your pitch was too high. You, you didn't even sing well. So then you balance yourself. Listen, you must have an attitude towards life that you don't let people just get under your skin. You are losing weight for no, no issue. You are tearing out your hair. Your skin is losing its, 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 its color for no reason because you are letting people live rent free in your head. Don't, do, don't allow people to do that. Am I talking to somebody? Learn. Listen. Whenever you are crazy, when people have opinions, there are two ways. You either, you either react or you respond. Reaction is often immediate. Reaction is often emotional. Reaction is often short term. You make bad mistakes. But response is an intelligent, logical response. You take your time, look at the future. That this person that is speaking, do I, does, does the person even matter? Sometimes the best gift you can give to people is to let them think they matter. Just get on, find where they are, go and walk there just to ignore them. I hope I'm doing you well. When criticisms come, my friend, learn out of it. If it is true, change. If it is not true, get on with your life. So long as people have mouth after eating, they'll find something to say. Why is it that it's only here that are clapping? Let's, can I turn the mic? They criticize the apostle. Listen, in life, you will be criticized. Stop fighting back. If you slap a pig, your hands will get dirty. Sometimes the best gift you can give to people to, is to let them know what you are thinking. They will throw the shades and go and see whether you have looked. <laughs> Never mind. Number five. The fifth lesson I learned, the leadership lesson. Have you learned something today? Yes. About opinions and criticism? Stop the fighting. Stop the counter shade. Stop the hashtags. You are too mature for that. Listen, you can be young only once, but don't be immature indefinitely. Grow. Grow beyond some things. There are people who have been anointed. I don't know who anointed them to trouble you. <laughs> don't let their ministry flourish. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, don't look at anybody yet. Now, number five. No matter your personal situation, this is what I learned. No matter your personal situation, whatever you are going through, still lead, still help people. That is what I saw about the Apostle Paul, the leader. Verse number 8 and 9, Acts 28. Let's look at it quickly. We, I think last week we looked at it, verse 8 and 9. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed. He laid the same hands that the snake bit. The same hands. What if Paul has said, hold it there, what if Paul has said, I don't do laying on of hands? What if Jesus has said, I don't do crosses? And Mary said, I don't do virgin beds. And after you have typed, then God says, I don't do windows. What are you going to do? The same hands that have been attacked by a vi venomous viper. He used those same hands. Listen, many times the enemy will attack you in the area of your calling. He will attack you daily. You know why you are going to every prophet that comes here prophesies that you are going to reach, and yet your financial kingdom is suffering violence. The enemy has information. You don't have to give up. There are people that say, God called me to this. God has asked me to a small problem, little pushback. And you've given up and you have you have an attitude. You can't be a leader in the eyes of God. To whom much is given, much is required. It's a responsibility, my friend. The same hand, the enemy will attack you 
I quoted, I quoted 2 Corinthians chapter 6 to you last week. Paul says that they call us poor, poor and yet we make others rich. They dishonor us and yet we are under somewhere. They trample upon us. Listen, there are contradictions in your leadership, in your life, my friend. You are not born to become a king. You are born to serve. And sometimes servants will suffer. Paul laid his hands and healed the guy. And the next verse says, and all the people in the island, on the island, the rest of the people, they came and they were healed. Now look at this. Paul was not in the greatest of shapes. He's just suffered shipwreck. He's, he, 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 he was saved by the skin of his teeth, if you like. He's getting some fire and he gets bitten. He's cold. People are calling him murderers. People are calling him murderer names. And yet, he takes those same hands that have been attacked to serve people. Friend, that is the heart of leadership. Some are enjoying it, some are not, but that's fine. Listen, use your gift, use your anointing, use your talent, use your blessing to help people whenever you can, to help people wherever you can. Don't give up on helping people because of your pain or your hurt. Wounded healers are the best healers. When you have been through that, you can understand. Peter was abrasive. Peter was crazy. You mess with him, he will chop off your ears. And by the way, I do not believe, personally, I don't believe Peter was going to chop the guy's ears. Who does that? You have a sword and you are going for people's ears for what? He was going for something better, but he missed. Thank God for the things we missed. <laughs> I said, thank God for the things we missed. He got the, guy, he got the guy's ears. <laughs> Peter was crazy. I mean, he ran a race to the, to the tomb. He lost. I mean, the guy was abrasive. And yet, after the Lord had processed him, now he could write with tenderness about being a shepherd under Christ. Listen, don't use your pain to punish other people. Don't punish your good people of today with the bad people of your yesterday. Don't do that. Hear me, church. Don't stop serving because of a personal issue. Don't stop serving. Listen, in the, under the old, old covenant, the priests and the Levites, the people will bring their sacrifice to them in the tabernacle. And they will slaughter them day by day, day by day. They slaughtered animals by their thousands. And sometimes what I wonder about is this. That as they go about slaughtering these animals with sharp knives, could it be possible that somewhere in the line of duty they cut their own selves? I'm sure they did. They were human. Which means they could be slaughtering animals and they themselves are being slaughtered. They are bleeding. And many times leaders will bleed around the altar. But because we are working with blood, you don't see our blood. What has stopped you from leading? What has stopped you from serving the Lord? Today's generation, our ego is killing some future blessings. Let me tell you something, my friend. Let me tell you. Educated one, degreed one. Let me tell you something. Pompous one, arrogant one. Let me tell you something, my friend. You become so big in your shoes, so big in your breeches, that you've forgotten where God brought you from. You've forgotten. So you have become so big. So even your walking is a, is a statement. Don't forget the things he has brought you out. Don't forget the secret between you and him. The greatest antidote to pride is remembrance. Never forget where he has brought you from. I have seen, I have seen them. I have seen you. <laughs> Sometimes human beings, we are very interesting. What is stopping you? Because somebody says something, they called him a murderer when he hadn't murdered yet. And yet, Paul, he kept his focus on his A day will come that you stand before God and you are going to give an account. Trust me, that day your pompous suit won't cut. That day your arrogance, your shoulders that looks like a coat hanger is already there will come down. I tell you, listen, when you haven't faced some things in life, I always tell people that when I look at people and I watch people and listen to people, I know they haven't been to Jordan yet. Jordan is a place of shame. It's a place of pain. It's a place where you are introduced to yourself. That is a place where you are circumcised and you are bleeding. But today's church, 
The arrogance sometimes can be too much. I'm not serving anymore. Not... Go ahead. Go ahead. Listen. Think about people. Think about the future. Serve. Moses was serving his people, was trying to serve his people, and they didn't understand him. In Exodus chapter 2, please give me the scripture. In Exodus chapter 2, he had run away. He, he went to look at his people. He saw that they were being oppressed. He tried to do the job. He wanted to serve. And they said, who made you a prince and judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you kill the Egyptians? And Moses feared and said, this thing is known. Look at what happened. When Pharaoh heard of this matter, he started to kill Moses. So Moses, he ran away from Pharaoh and he went to dwell in Midian. Listen, I am trying to help my people. The thing has become known. They want to kill me and I've run away. At that time, if it were me, I don't want to have any dealings with people. I'm tired. I can't do church with church people anymore. It's over. Now I'm beginning to heal. But look at what happens. The priest of Midian has seven daughters. Now, for those of you who think you are the only people who know God, Jethro was a priest of Midian. He was a priest. Where did he get it from? Hold it there. Midian was one of the sons of Abraham through his wife Keturah that Abraham sent away. When they were leaving, they took their father's religion, their God, with them. So, he was a priest of Midian. The Levites had not yet come. They had not been instituted yet, and there was a priest. So, sometimes you think you are the only one who knows God. Can you be humble already? That is by the side. The daughters, the seven daughters, they came and drew water, and they filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And when the shepherds came and drove them away, the shepherds came and drove them. But Moses stood up and held them and watered their flock. <coughs> Moses stood up. And when they came to Ruel, that is Jethro, is the same person, Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that you have come so soon today? And he says, an Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds and drew enough water for us and watered the flock. Moses looked like an Egyptian. But think about that. A man that has just been in trouble and has run away as a refugee. He saw a need. And he helped them. Amen. That is where he got his wife. Amen. That is where he got his wife, Zipporah, from. So please, whatever you do, don't stop it. Amen. Amen. Are you learning something? Yes. Then the final one that I learned here is in verse 15 to 16. Let me read it first, then I'll tell you the, 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 the title so you can write it down. you like it. Verse 15 to 16. From there, when the brethren, including sisters, heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Epi, the Epi Forum and three inns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God, and then he took, took courage. And when, uh, when he came to Rome, the soldier delivered the prisoners to the captain, the guard. But Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with a soldier who, who something, who guarded him. And for whatever years. The last thing is that, listen, leader, you are going to like this. Enjoy the leadership journey. Christian, Christianity is not a punishment. Enjoy it. Enjoy your leadership journey. The truth about leadership is this. Leadership is draining. Leadership is demanding. Leadership can be depleting. It depletes you. You pour your life constantly into people. Sometimes you wonder, when will this stop? Sometimes it feels like a life sentence with hard labor. But the truth is that somewhere along the line, you are going to find moments and occasions for enjoyment. Please don't feel guilty. Enjoy it. When the people came, they came to Paul and Paul took heart. He was happy that he had nice people around him. He knew that one day he would die. But at that moment, when good people were around him, he enjoyed. Why am I saying this? I want to be very deliberate in talking to somebody. One of the things I have learned, especially about us, Christians or Charismatics, we think happiness is a sin. We feel that, oh yes, and we have allowed people to, why is she dancing? Why is she happy? 
My friends, if I can't happy myself, do you happy me? The thing is already here. One time, sometimes this Christian funerals, please stay home and let's cash up you our donations. It's so boring and I'm asking, do, you, do you people get happy at all? Sometimes I know people who are very happy until they come to church, then their face change. They are very spiritual, like they've just been baptized in lemon juice. You are worshipping the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. Hey, hey, my friend, change your face. Is that how you love? Imagine going to a woman that you want to, lady, I really want to marry you, you know, can you marry me? Is that how you do it? You do it, lady, you know, I wanted to change thy name, you know, and I see if myself put that a ring on thy finger, for I see thy design like a guitar, that by the spirit of God, I'm going to play it. a little bit. My friend, life is short. You can spend because you are a Christian, so what? I'm not talking about some debauchery. I'm not talking about licentiousness, but be happy for a while. When you have good people around, listen, throw a party for heaven's sake. Have fun. There's nothing. Some of you came from some denominations that they put it on the inside of you and they put out some interesting scriptures. Like I'm saying, I didn't say go and sin. No. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about holiness. But there's clean happiness. Enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong. Don't apologize because you're happy. Go to Cleo. Go to Cleo. Let her throw you a party. She, she has all the party things. Just invest some money. You, you've invested so much money, you're going to die and leave it. Your money is sitting in a bank. One time, one time, a, a preacher came to us. I remember some years. And he was sharing a testimony. He went to Canada. And he saw, he met this guy. I mean, eight days a week, the guy was working. Eight days a week. <laughs> 25 hours a day, the guy was working. Job to job to job. To, why? And he said his food was only rice and oil. Don't quote it. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> the days he's happy, he adds onion. Very happy days, extra tomatoes. Oh, no, yeah. Every day the same. Every day the same. Why? Next time he had, the guy came back from work. He was right undressing. He dropped dead. Yes, he did. So when are you going to have happy memories with your family? When? You are always calculating exchange rate. <laughs> Some coaches will never let you have fun. Because they think fun is sin, especially when you are Christian. <laughs> I'm teaching, I wanted to hear that. You know, last, 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 last February, Mommy and I were in Accra, Ghana. That's where Pastor Kwame comes from, Accra, Ghana. <laughs> I've been there before, nice place. And two of my closest friends happened to be there. They are pastors in the United Kingdom. They happened to be in the city. So we connected. One has been my friend for 40-something years, Pastor Sam. He's been my closest friend forever. We've been 40 something years friends. Then another one, Pastor Anaidin, he's been here, the one who called me old lion. And so, Mommy and I decided to call them up for breakfast. So they came home. And we had breakfast. And we had breakfast. And we laughed. I hadn't laughed as loud and hard like that in my life for a long time. I mean, we laughed, we looked back, we remained, I mean, we laughed and laughed. And we were so happy. But this is the lesson. After they left, after, before, before they left, mommy said, guys, well done. And I said, well done for what? She said, I observed you, none of you spoke about ministry. We didn't talk about who has troubled us. I didn't talk about you. 
No. And one of my friends for the said, This is one of my happiest times. Happiest. And he said, Bishop, can we do it again? And I said, By all means, let's do it again. We didn't talk about the way you have treated us. We didn't talk about it. <laughs> no. We were so happy. We were talking about noon day things. We talked about soccer. We looked back. We laughed. The times that I shared. In fact, Pastor Sam brought up one of my testimonies. It's in my book. It's coming up. They are, they are, they are, they are working on that. Two for the road. And I shared some of my life story. The way he said, you remember, Bishop, that, that Sunday that you wear women's shoes. I said, I remember. <laughs> Yes, me. In the city of London, I wear women's shoes. Because my shoes got burnt. And the people I'd gone to visit, they were three, they were all women. And it was a Sunday after church. How do I solve this problem? When my shoes are burnt. I sat in that room, and my shoes were in front of the heater, the thing, the furnace. It was, and I said, who is, who is, who is burning goat? Who is burning goat? The one of the hell said, hey. he said, Pastor, your shoes are on fire. Yeah. Hey. Now, where do I go to redeem myself? Then one of them said, What's the, your shoe size? I thought maybe she had a boyfriend that had left and left. She said, Oh, we are the same size. She went in and brought, said, This one looks like men a little, men a little bit. And that thing happened in Croydon, south of London, and I lived in north of London. If you know London, it's no joke. Miles! And I had to sit on this bus. <laughs> and this little white British boys got on the bus. And they opened. <laughs> then I also reacted. It was not a response. I turned to a big black guy. Like, what are you looking at? There, they kept quiet. They saw that I was becoming very, very crazy. They got off the next stop. I'm sure they were not getting off the next stop. Right. And it was freezing cold too and she gave me a yellow woman's cardigan. When it pours, when it rains, it pours, my friend. My attitude was the same. I was happy. I was okay. At least I had shoes. By then, people didn't know that something called unisex. So all I'm saying, have you learned something? This is a school for your life. This is a school for, this is as spiritual as John 3, 16. Please, please, please. There are too many psychosomatic diseases on earth today. A lot of abuse, a lot of reaction, a lot of beating. It's too much stress in your system. Happy yourself. When God has blessed you and you have worked, happy yourself. <laughs> Paul's days are less. He didn't retire from his message. In his rented home, he kept preaching, teaching the word. That is legacy. The lesson here that I leave with you is that whatever God has called you, stick to the assignment. You may get into other things, but don't pack up your leadership. No matter what, no matter how difficult it is, steady your hands. Because I know that it will be worth it now. And it will be worth it in eternity. Touch generations. Write your legacy in the hearts of people. Keep on leading. Like David Livingston said, you are immortal until your assignment is over. My name is Franco Buswapia. Não faz não fim. I like it. Can you engage with God for the next sixty seconds, ninety seconds? Something that you learned today, something that has dropped into your heart, something that has opened your eyes. 
Maybe you have gotten confused because the journey has not been straight. Maybe people that you thought may help you didn't help you. Maybe you have a lot of questions because of the contradictions of your work with God. Asaph said that my feet almost slipped when I looked at the prosperity of the wicked. But my friend, God is still God. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So engage with him right now. Talk to him right now. Talk to him right now. That is leadership, my friend. The leadership journey is never straight. People will surprise you in your leadership journey like they surprise for total strangers, minister. I don't know where you are, but like our third point, there's a lot of contradictions. A lot of questions in leadership. Why must I be saved, man, from a snake bite? God preserves me so that I will go and die in Rome. You said you should have killed me. But that is life. That is leadership, my friend. All of us have questions that we may not be able to answer this side of heaven. Don't let that make your wells of anointing dirty. No, keep on. And then remember that people will always have opinions about you. Has there, has there been some unfair criticisms that is killing you, my friend? Today, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off and get on with leadership. Because people will have opinions about you. They will call you Medra. They will call you God. They will call you hero. They will call you deputy devil. Like Paul, maintain your focus on your fire. Whatever it is, don't stop serving. Keep serving. The same hands that were beaten by the snake was the same hands he used to lay hands on the people on the island and heal them. Keep serving. So don't stop because of your pain. It's part of it. Your leadership will never grow beyond the threshold of your pain. How much pain will you handle? Sometimes the difference between a small church and a big church is not how eloquent the preacher is. It's how much pain he's able to handle. And whatever you do, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. Thank you for counting us faithful and worthy and commissioning into our hands the awesome responsibility of leading people. We've not been this way before, Lord, so we need your help. Guide us. Lead us, Lord. I pray for wisdom upon your people about how to handle the flock of God. Help us, my Father, not only to be lambs, but also to be lions. That with gentle hands, we will lead courageously. And like David, we will shepherd your people with integrity of heart and guide them with our skillfulness of hands. I pray that you take these principles of leadership, expand them within our spirits and our minds, that wherever we find ourselves serving, we will serve to your glory. We thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Let every leader in the house agree and say amen. amen. Blessings and blessings. High five some two or three people and tell them lead on. Lead on. Lead on. Lead on. You may be seated. Have you learned something today? Yes. Blessed be God. We're going to take our tithe and our offerings. We're going to take our tithe and our offerings. Um... Please don't, don't go off yet. Don't go off yet. We're going to take a, Listen, if you need an envelope, let the helpers help you. Let the ushers help you. If you need to write, write a check, please write down to All Nations Church. And remember, a thousand has three zeros. Let's give, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Praise down, shake it together, running over. Shall men. But we have our digital platforms. Better still, our digital platform. We are on Cash App. When you go to Cash App and you see the dollar sign carries house there's there are a few of them we have nj we have nc if you do those things they'll go to all some of our churches ours is anc then of course paypal and zell let's give <laughs> Could ask for
to an amazing leadership gathering and conference called Iron Sharpens Iron. My friends, Pat, Frank and Mary Appiah have a way of creating and nurturing one of you please make plans join me and hundreds of other leaders for iron sharpens iron 2023 look forward to seeing you there if you're going to see clearly what God has for your life you'll need someone to help you you'll need someone to teach you you'll need some instruction if you're gonna have clear vision you've got to make your serious connection with the house of God all nations worship assembly hosts an annual conference entitled iron sharpens iron i'm going to be with them next week in atlanta georgia on july the 20th the conference goes from july 19th through the 23rd but i'd love for you to join me as our conversation will be around leadership exploits and you know i love that conversation so i'm inviting you to join me and the all nations worship assembly as they host their annual leadership conference i'll be there on next thursday it'll be going on 19th through the 23rd and i'd love for you to meet me in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello everyone, I'm Jana Alcorn, your Ambassador of Hope from Nashville, Tennessee. I want to encourage you to register now for Iron Sharpens Iron 2023. We're coming from all over the globe to empower and impact you. As leaders, we need courage, we need perspective, we need character, and we need hope. And I know this conference will be a standard setting conference for the coming months. You don't want to miss, and I will see you there. You're going through a dark place, but you can make it light. You're going through a place of, of sorrow, but you can make it a place of laughter. Because when your heart is set on a pilgrimage, you change the environment you are in. Hello, I'm Pastor Mesa Otterville, and this year, it will be my joy and privilege to partner with my dear friend, Dr. Frank Ofosuapia, as he presents his great conference, the Ion Sharpens Ion Conference. This is a conference for both pastors and people in the marketplace and speaks to very pertinent leadership concerns for our community. Uh, Dr. Ofosuapia is a very distinguished Christian leader and a reliable voice in the Christian community and I consider it a privilege to be with him and other speakers at this conference as we present the Word of God and help people find the path that God has already chosen for them. The theme is leadership exploits, and we trust that great exploits will be done, and we trust that we'll see you there, and you would have an experience of a lifetime that will transform not only your outlook, but your output as well. God bless you as you participate in this great conference. Iron Sharpens Iron 2023, from July 19th through 23rd at All Nations Caris House. Register now using the mobile app or visit advancedlife.org. Well, there you go. So you don't want to miss this. It is not just for pastors. It's for everybody in the marketplace. Bring the leadership out of you. Invest in yourself. One of the things that Mommy and I have done over the years is every year we have looked for one or two conferences where we pray nobody knows us, and we go. We pay sometimes a lot of dollars just to go and better ourselves for our leadership. Somebody knows what you don't know. Somebody has been where you, don't, you haven't been yet. Invest. Invest, invest. Some people are the way they are because they are cheap. Their monies don't improve them. It's not only makeup or hair, hairstyle. No. Let your inside be greater than your outside. So please, whatever you do, invest. Even if you have work issues or commitments that you cannot make it during the daytime, in the evening, attend. Come. Let's, let's, let's do leadership together. I told you that if you stay out there, you may get information. But when you come in, information and impartation will happen to you. 
So let's do that. And I also want us to make a lot of noise. Share. Where's Nadidi? Where's Na? Na, come. Na here? Yeah, yes. Come and, come and help us in two minutes about social media is king. So just educate us a little bit. Should I sit down or stand? Okay. I Some church. don't like it when I stand with them, so. Hi, church. Uh, my name is Nadia Day, and I am in charge of the social media ministry. It's really important that we as a church have community in the online space as well. This is another way of evangelizing to people and to the world. So I encourage you guys to follow us. Um, also, like, re, uh, repose, share on your stories. Because when you find other people's content, you just automatically do that. So why don't you do that for the church as well? Thank you. D did you hear what she said? <laughs> is it me or... Is it me? Okay, they heard you. They heard you. <laughs> you know, sometimes on Sunday afternoons, I can't hear very fast. So I don't. Did you all hear? I think I heard share. So please share. <laughs> Whatever you do, please share. Please share. Please share. Please share. There are people that have watched you over the years. You never share anything on nations. Oh, yes. You never. You hardly share things on nations. I watch. I watch you. I know. I know. I told you last Sunday that you have your own agenda. So go ahead and do that. Some of us are not exactly stupid. We have our own agenda too. So share. It's your home. It's your church. Mommy says it's all the way. If it's worth hearing, it's worth sharing. So please share. Share. Invite people. Call them in. Let's have fun. On, on Saturday morning, we have Youth on Fire. Gen X, Youth on Fire on Saturday morning. With the pastor, it's going to be crazy. 9 a.m. I mean, it's all the plugs are unplugged. It's going to be just amazing. You don't want to miss that. Then Saturday night is our worship night with Nathaniel Basse. <laughs> I cannot guarantee you a seat. I cannot guarantee you a seat. We have some here. We have bigger space at the back, but I cannot guarantee you. If you want the real thing, you better rush. And let's get there. 6 p.m. It gets so Then on Sunday, listen up, everybody. Sunday is a joint service. I don't know how it's going to look like here on Sunday, but it's going to be a joint service. It's going to be crazy. So you don't want to come late. It's going to be one service. And you know, you know how it goes when we have one service. So please, whatever you do, please let's do that together. It's going to be awesome. Um, I have a Prophet Kofi. And um, Roger. Prophet Roger, God bless you. And um, oh, yes, Doc, good to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. It's the light thing. They punish me with it, but good to see you, man of God. Good to see you. So good to see you. Welcome. But, prophets, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your presence here to be with us. We know you could have gone to a thousand places, but thank you for coming by. We are grateful for your presence. Am I done? Amen. Can we appreciate our Father one more time? Just appreciate him. What a word. What a word. You know. What a word. I'm, I'm convinced he wear women's shoes so we can wear good shoes. So can we appreciate him again? Amen. Is there anyone who's worshiping with us for the first time? Anyone here worshiping with us for the first time? Anyone here worshiping with us for the first time? Just wave at us. Oh, we have some at the back, um, upstairs. No, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. We have more over at the back. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. If you're sitting around them, just shake their hands, just welcome them, love on them, love on them. Listen, we thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Like Papa says, you could have been in a thousand places, but you've chosen to hang with us. There is a gift that he prepared for you. If it's okay with you, can you gather your things? There's some women who are in the aisles. Just head out with them, and they will hand you that gift to say thank you for being with us. Keep clapping, clap, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Uh, please, if you haven't registered, do your best to register for ISI. Do your best to register for ISI. Again, like Papa said, it's not only for church leaders. Um, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. So please do your best. I believe you can register from the app. You can um, um, go ahead and do that. If you haven't downloaded our app, go ahead and download it. 
and register. Amen. Amen. I believe that is it. Um, let's take our declaration. Let's do it. I declare that this is my time of exploits because I am empowered. Limitation, barriers, and resistance will not contain me or hold me back. Extraordinary acceleration, abundant goodness, and uncommon harvest will come to me. I declare that because of his presence, I go and glory to glory as I serve the purposes of God in my life. Apathy and stagnant will be my portion as I press into great exploits. I walk in dominion.